So you're wondering where to start with Blake Crouch. I got you. Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to the channel. My name is Theo. Thank you so much for hanging out. Please go ahead and consider subscribing if you haven't already, if you like this type of content. I'm just going to do a quick video on my thoughts on where I think people should start with one of my favorite authors, Blake Crouch. There are a bunch of different entry points for different readers, different preferences, what you typically like in your books. So if you have been considering trying Blake Crouch, if you're not sure where to start with Blake Crouch, if you've read one of his books and enjoyed it, but you're not quite sure what the next one you should pick up is, uh, you're in the right place. For those that don't know, Blake Crouch is like a sci-fi techno thriller writer. He uh, writes very quick, fast paced page turner thriller books with a little bit of a science flair, not in a way that overpowers uh, the story that he's telling, but just enough to, you know, make you think about things, uh, make you think about humanity. He touches on subjects like AI, gene manipulation, first contact, parallel universes, uh, the butterfly effect, string theory, that kind of stuff. So if you like that type of stuff, if you've ever read Michael Crichton, if you enjoy Michael Crichton, Blake Crouch is who a lot of people consider to be the one to take up that mantle and maybe carry forward that torch. So if you do like Michael Crichton, or if even if you think you would, uh, you'll feel right at home with Blake Crouch. The place that I would consider starting with Blake Crouch is where most people start. It's where I started. And uh, if you've been on BookTube for any amount of time, you will have heard someone somewhere talk about this book. You may have even seen it in a bookstore, uh, but it's definitely one of his, I think it's definitely the one that put him on the map, what people would consider to be maybe his most famous or popular book, and that is Dark Matter. I'm going to try and keep everything spoiler free. I'm going to give you a little bit of a, an idea of what these books are about as I go through the different uh, you know, starting points, basically. But I would urge you guys, if something catches your eye, something sounds kind of up your alley, go ahead and Google it. Look at the look at the blurbs. Go ahead and look at um, you know Goodreads and see if that's something that you might uh, might enjoy. So Dark Matter is basically talking about you know, the idea of multiple realities, string theory, parallel universes, the idea of the life not lived or the path not taken. If you could go back and maybe make one different decision to alter your, your life path, uh, would you take that? How would that affect you and your situation? Um, what that would look like? It, it explores that fairly well. The biggest thing with this one, and probably the reason why I would consider it to be a good starting point for most people is number one, it does everything that Blake Crouch does really well. Uh, all of that is in this book. He has a very quick kind of choppy, not choppy, but punchy uh, writing style. He uses a lot of fragments deliberately. He's very, very quick with his cadence. Um, and he just, I don't know, I just like his writing and it's very well suited for a thriller type book like this. This one is an intimate story. It's a micro story. You're following one character, his situation, his predicament, his family, and the impact on him and his life. And so for that reason, this is a good starting point as well, because um, you know, you get in touch with this one character. It explores the idea of alternate realities and different versions of yourself having lived these different lives based on the choices that you would have ma that you made and how that would be altered depending on the choices that you could have made. And uh, it does that very well and it does it intimately from this guy's point of view. So for that reason, it is a good place to start. It kind of introduces you to his writing style and the type of story with the type of thought provoking you know, themes and ideas that Blake Crouch is known for. I really enjoyed this one. Uh, this, I remember my wife saying like, oh, I don't remember you reading a book so fast. Like, cause I devoured this. And again, if you want a sample of what makes Blake Crouch so good, this is where I would start. You get the best of the best. It's a bit of a double-edged sword because, you know, everything else you might not like as much, but then again, you're starting with sort of his best work. So it's up to you if this is where you want to start. I would think that you can't lose. If you like Blake Crouch, there's plenty to, plenty more to go from. Um, and if you don't, I would say that Blake Crouch might not be for you. So for 90% of people, I would say starting here is great. The next book is one that's talked about usually in the same breath as Dark Matter. A lot of times they're compared. I think they're, while similar, they're very different. And I'm in the minority who actually prefers this one over Dark Matter, and that is Recursion. In this book, people are experiencing false and altered memories. Uh, people are complaining about, you know, these visceral and often terrifying memories of like these, these lives that they don't even know if they've lived. People are complaining that they feel as though they have these memories. They're harboring these memories of lives that 
feel like they've been lived, but they're not really sure. They don't even know who they are anymore. People are killing themselves. It turns into a bit of an epidemic. And so this one is very interesting. I loved this book and it zooms out to a bit of a macro, a more broad look at the impacts of something like this uh, on a broader population. It also explores in a very interesting way and kind of a satisfying way, I think, um, the idea of time travel and actually going back in time to like correct the path of things or fix things. If you could go and, you know, back in time and alter the course of like the entire planet, like, would you do that? Um, would you try and sacrifice yourself and maybe your relationship to try and do that for the greater good. It explores kind of all those ideas from what I can remember. And also there's a very good romance in this one. This one takes place uh, with two timelines and there's a little bit of time jumping. So if you like time jumping and you like the idea of time travel, if you like the idea of going back and altering the course of history or people's lives, you'll enjoy this one. If you don't like alternate timelines, if you don't like time jumping, or even if some people don't like the idea of time travel, in their books. They think it's kind of stupid. Um, maybe you won't like this one. I would urge you maybe to try, try Dark Matter where that one is a little bit more, what if I made a different decision? What would that life look like? This one is actually a little bit more time travel uh, heavy. So if you like that kind of stuff, you might like this one. Again, I'm in the minority that actually preferred this one to Dark Matter, but I think they're both excellent. I think they're both similar, but very different. This one is more macro. Dark Matter is more intimate. And depending on what kind of story you like, maybe start with one or the other. Don't be surprised if you like one more than the other. Uh, that happens with most people. So Recursion is definitely a good place to start and uh, one that I think most people will like. If you like Dark Matter, chances are you'll like this one as well. Again, you might like one more than the other. The next one is one that a lot of people are probably thinking about starting with, and that is because it's his most recent book. It came out July 12th, and that one is Upgrade. Upgrade was a very interesting story. This one talks about gene manipulation, uh, it basically talks about a guy who works for this gene protection act or agency, and he's tasked with finding out what basically what happens. And this is just on the cover, so it's not a spoiler, but maybe fast forward if you don't want any spoilers at all. But he wakes up feeling a little different. If you guys have ever watched the movie Limitless, it's kind of like he wakes up feeling a little bit sharper, a little bit smarter, a little bit faster. He feels like a better version of himself and he seems to continue to improve. And he's not exactly sure why there is an event that he can link that to and goes, oh, okay, well, something has obviously happened. So he starts to explore that. He's obviously uh, entrenched in sort of the gene protection um, group. And so you know, he has more knowledge about this type of stuff than most. And as his story unravels, you find out a little bit more about his past and his motivations in, you know, why he works for the Gene Protection Agency and why he's so passionate about protecting and policing uh, the ability to impact genomes and change DNA and all that kind of stuff. This book is very well done. Again, it's exactly like the other two in that it is fast paced. It's a page turner. You're going to want to devour this in like one or two sittings. Um, it is a sci-fi thriller. It's a little more heavier in the science than the other two. There are a couple pages where it literally just kind of lists uh, DNA types or DNAs. You can just skip that stuff. It doesn't ha it doesn't impact the story. It's just kind of giving you a little bit of background and giving you a little bit of the science to put everything in context, but you don't need it to enjoy it. I would say that this one, for some reason, didn't quite land with me as well as the other two. I liked it. I enjoyed it. I'm glad I read it. It's Blake Crouch. So eh, an okay Blake Crouch book is still a fantastic change of pace and really kind of a refreshing uh, palate cleanser. But I ended up liking Dark Matter and Recursion more. That was just me. This is also a fantastic place to start. If you want to start with his most recent book, if you really like science, like if, if you if you're if you're interested in reading Blake Crouch because you're interested in the science and sci-fi part of the thriller genre, then you're going to like this one a little bit more because it is a little heavier on the science. But yeah, this one talks about, you know, what it would look like if humans had the ability to make better versions of themselves, how that would look like, how that would be monitored. Uh, is that the right thing to do if we had the ability to upgrade ourselves? Should we do that? Uh, you know, what are the outcomes 
potentially and um, you know what that might look like and mean for the world. So again, if you want to get a flavor for Blake Crouch's writing, if you want to start with uh, his most recent book and you're not afraid of a little bit of sciencey stuff, then Upgrade is going to be your choice. The next one I want to talk about is a little unusual in that I think it is his longest book. Uh, it's a little fatter than most of the Blake Crouch books that you'll find, and I'm just checking. It's about 500 pages. It's just over 500 pages, which for a Blake Crouch book is kind of long. This one I read in a buddy buddy read or a, a group read with some friends of mine and uh, we all liked it. It was a solid like three and a half, three, three and a half star depending on who rated it. I quite liked it more than most. I think I gave it a three and a half probably. And um, this one was just a fun one. It came out in 2012 and that one is Abandoned. This one takes place over two timelines. One is present day. I think it's like 2000 seven or 2010 or something like that. And then the other one is uh, in the 18, late 1800s. Basically uh, in this old mining town, 1893 on Christmas day, the entire population of this small little town uh, disappeared. And it follows kind of the events in the past that led to that and, and how that mystery unfolded. And then the present day when they're kind of searching for I won't, I won't spoil it, but they're basically searching for something and they're actually looking for, you know, traces of this old, old town and trying to uncover the mystery of why these people disappeared. It's a very interesting premise. And uh, for those people that like mysteries, uh, it's a mystery at the heart of it. There's no real science in this one. There's no like sci-fi stuff. If you like kind of a paranormal feel to your books, I'm not going to go into it and spoil what the mystery was or whether or not there was paranormal stuff going on or, or not. It has a very paranormal kind of feeling. If you like Westerns, uh, I would go ahead and pick this up. This is, it's not a Western, but it kind of, because it takes place in this old mining town in the 1890s, you know, if you've play, ever played Red Dead Redemption, if you think about the huts and the miners and the cowboys and just the old timey feel, that's what you're going to get with this one. It's a contained story. Uh, it follows a couple characters. Again, it's two timelines it bounces between present day and like 1890s and it does that very well it's not confusing you follow the characters um, present you follow the characters in the past and eventually you kind of, it almost like the two timelines kind of intersect where they're in the same place but in different points in history and so they're kind of following what happened to this town and the mystery and because you can live sort of what happened in the past alongside it it makes it very exciting and uh, for those that like mysteries and, you know, trying to uncover the clues and trying to like figure out what might have happened, I think this one's going to be right up your alley. I really enjoyed it. There was a couple emotional moments, couple kind of gut-wrenching moments where you like you, you think you know what happened and then you kind of find out what happened to some of these people. It's not one that I think about on a daily basis. It doesn't have these mind-altering ideas or these, you know, provocative themes or whatever, but it's just a good time. If you like the Western feel, if you like a bit of a paranormal feel, if you like mysteries, you'll be right at home with this one. I would recommend a lot of people try this one. Again, it's one of his older books. I don't know a whole lot about his older books. I'll show you some of them that I have, but if you want to start from a little bit older and make your way up to like Dark Matter and Recursion and Upgrade, I would probably start with this one. It's also his biggest. It definitely has, you know, the same style of writing, but it's just a different type of book. It's not a hard sci-fi or thriller. It's really more like a Western mystery um, with, like I said, a little bit of a paranormal feeling to it, at least at the beginning of the book. So this one's also another good one. I would recommend people give this one a shot. The next book or books I'm going to recommend are the most fun I've had reading Blake Crouch. And I think that this is his only series. I could be wrong on that, but I'm pretty sure I'm right. So if I'm wrong, feel free to correct me in the comments. But for right now, I think this is his only real series. And you will have heard about this one. I'm sure if you've been on BookTube, you'll know which one I'm talking about. This is the most fun I've had reading Blake Crouch. And for fantasy readers, for people that like trilogies, for people that like series, for people that need a little bit of a longer story, um, you're going to love this one. And this is the Wayward Pines trilogy. All three books together are probably the size of a larger fantasy book. So, you know, it's a good one to try, especially if you like series. This one basically is about like a federal agent that goes looking for some missing colleagues, takes him to Idaho. He ends up waking up from this car accident, not remembering who he is, no memory, no ID, no phone, no wallet, that kind of stuff, and wakes up in this you know hospital in this town, kind of ends up remembering that he's looking for these people and starts to under, starts to get a feeling that the town isn't quite right. Something's off about the town. And so, uh, 
that carries forward the story of him trying to figure out who the hell he is, what exactly took him here, and what happened to the people that he knows that he was following. These books are thrillers at their core. It does a very good job as a series setting up the town, kind of getting really in depth, and then taking things to the next level and giving us a really cool ending. I really enjoyed this one. I can't recommend this trilogy enough. I've recommended it to a lot of people and everyone I know who's read this series uh, has really enjoyed it. I will give you guys a warning. Don't be jaded if you've seen uh, like the TV adaptation or whatever. I guess it was on Netflix. Um, I saw a little bit of it. And from what I've heard, I didn't continue. From what I heard, it doesn't line up with the story. They took a lot of stuff out. They changed it. Apparently it's terrible. So, um, you know, don't be jaded with that. If you've seen that, please go ahead and just read the books. And if you've read the books, maybe avoid the adaptation too. Maybe just do a little bit of research, read a review or two and see if it's something that will jade your memory of the books or if it's just you know entertaining enough to watch after you finish the books. But either way, do me a favor and just read the books because they're excellent. Again, I'm gonna try not to spoil anything, but for people that like fantasy, for people that like sci-fi, for people that enjoy trilogies or series, for people that like you know thrillers, mysteries, uh, people that like, I got to be careful here, but people that like the idea of monsters and creatures and uh, other life forms or, you know, mutations or things like that, uh, this one is going to be a really fun ride for you. I would urge you guys to pick this up. Um, try even just the first one, and I guarantee you, you're going to want to know what happens. All right. Now, if you want to read something shorter, if you're like, we're talking 200 pages, something that was written uh, before all the ones that I've mentioned, this one was published, I think 2010. If you want to get an idea of his writing, and if you want to try what Blake Crouch said in an interview, I think, is his weirdest story, kind of the most weird book he's written, I would recommend Famous. Again, as a disclaimer, I'm going to say that here you're starting with something a little older, and I can guarantee you that Blake Crouch evolved and improved as an author, so I wouldn't judge him by this book. But this one is very weird. Um, it's short, so it is definitely easy to fit into a schedule. Basically, it's about a guy in his late 30s, still lives at home, uh, kind of a bum, works a dead end job, you know, not a whole lot to, to say for himself. And he ends up getting let go from his job at some point. And really, his only claim to fame is that he looks an awful lot like this Hollywood movie star, this Oscar winning actor. And he looks an awful like, lot like him, like to the point where when he's out in public, people mistake him for this guy and stuff like that. And so there comes a time when he's saved up a bunch of money and he says, you know what, now's the time, you know, I have nothing that's keeping me in this town. He basically moves to, I guess, like Hollywood or LA or whatever, and he decides to make the most of it, you know, spend a little bit of money and uh, live the good life pretending like he's this actor. If you want something that is short, that's fairly well written, that doesn't have a whole lot of sci-fi or kind of any, you know, weird elements in it, something that explores mental health and identity, something that is more of a character study than anything else with sort of a fun, crazy ending, um, you're going to want to check this one out. Something small to just pick up and try to get a flavor for his writing. Again, don't judge him based on this book, but Famous is a good one to pick up as well. One that I don't have a physical copy of, but one that is one of the best novellas I've ever read is uh, Blake Crouch's novella called Summer Frost. I don't want to give anything away on Summer Frost because, again, it's one of my favorites, but it's also very short, so it would be easy to sort of spoil stuff. But basically, it's about this video game developer that develops this character, um, and it explores the idea of AI and free will and, you know, what it means to be human. It was one of, I think, six uh, novellas or short stories in the Forward collection, which was, I believe, curated by Blake Crouch, and it was a bunch of different authors. And it's six novellas, short stories. One of them was written by N.K. Jemisin, and that one is called Emergency Skin. That one was also very good. I would recommend checking that out. But yeah, this one was excellent. This this is probably what I would recommend for people that like science, for people that like, you know, iRobot, AI, the theme of free will, what it means to be human. If you like video games, if you're into that sort of space yourself, I think you'd get a kick out of this one. This one is very interesting. If you want to read something recent, if you want to read some of the best of Blake Crouch, but you want something very low commitment, something that explores really interesting themes, does what it does very well, I would highly recommend Summer Frost. It is one of my favorites, and for a novella, it is very impressive. I also have a couple other ones uh, that uh, I haven't read yet. These are older. These were all kind of published and in the same way. I think when he was self-publishing, if I'm not mistaken, um, I have Snowbound, which is this one. 
I have desert places. I have fully loaded. This one actually is probably going to be the next one that I read because it's just, it, it's 10 short stories, which might be very interesting. And then I have uh, run. And I think there are one or two that I don't own. Um, but these are, like I said, older. They were all kind of published when he was self-publishing. They all seem to have been published around 2010, 2011 kind of thing. But um, they all seem really short, really interesting. They all kind of have different stories. I don't think any of them are tied to a series. I do think that the Wayward Pines trilogy is his only series. So these are also great if you want to kind of start in publication order or maybe just pick up his older works first and make your way up as he improves as an author to then get blown away by Dark Matter and Recursion and all his new stuff, which are excellent. Um, you can go ahead and pick up some of his older stuff. Uh, there's a ton to choose from. I think they're all on Amazon. And uh, yeah, so I mean, that kind of covers it. I would say that Blake Crouch can appeal to a lot of different readers. Uh, it really sort of depends on what you enjoy in your books. I hope that this video was helpful in some way. If you guys have any questions, uh, I would do my best to answer them. I hope you guys do pick up a Blake Crouch book. I do hope that if you've read one or two Blake Crouch books, you have some ideas on where maybe to start next or what else to pick up. If you guys want more of these types of videos, like where you should read, how to approach, how to start reading a particular author, uh, maybe I'll go ahead and try and do that for authors that I've read uh, enough from and can give a little bit of uh, you know an insightful opinion. So that's about it. Um, I'll leave it there, guys. I really appreciate you guys watching. I really appreciate all the subscribers and uh, the support and the encouragement and the comments and all that stuff. Thanks for always being nice. I will catch you guys soon on the next one.